What's up, divas? What's up, Debo? So it's about to be Real Talk, Real Talk Wednesday. So I know y'all probably pissed off with me because last week I didn't do Real Talk because I had, a, let me tell y'all, I had such a very long day last week. Like, for real, um, I had to take my son to his neurologist because, you know, he has seizures. I had to do a lot of things. So my day was super long. By the time I was able to get home and settle in, it was like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the evening after I had to take care of what I had to do, like, in my house. And by then, I was so tired. It just was like, you know what? I can't do this. And it's 7.45 p.m. right now. But I only have one real talk to do. And I'm going to make it quick. Well, not quick, but I'm just going to do it. Um, because um, I have to pack my things up. So me and my daughters are leaving early, early in the morning to catch our flight to New York. So that's why my bed isn't made because I was cleaning my sheets. Like, I wanted to make sure my room was clean. So, you know, when I get home with my husband, everything is clean. I don't have to do anything. So, yeah, please excuse my bed. It's not made. Y'all have never seen my vi a video with me and my bed has not been made. But today it's a first. So, so, you know. So, other than that, you know, we're going to New York City. We're going to New York tomorrow. We'll be back in a week. I'm excited. I'm really happy because I get to bring my husband home. So, he'll be here with me and the kids for good. Um, and let me see. Nothing really spectacular. I had a long day today because, like I said, I have to, you know, get out the door at, um, I think I'm going to leave, like, at 2 because my plane leaves at 5. So, this is going to be my daughter, Nay, and Mumsy's first time ever getting on an airplane. So, they're really excited about it. Um, and I don't think they'll really be bothered by it because they like those rides at the amusement park, you know, them crazy rides. So, I don't think they'll really be bothered by it. Me, personally, I don't do the rides I don't even like to go to, I mean, I like to go to amusement parks, don't get me wrong, but it's so expensive, and I don't, I don't get on any rides, I'm scared to death, I don't find anything thrilling about getting on a roller coaster and going down super fast to where my heart is about to, you know what I'm saying, fall out. Me personally, I probably would piss and shit on myself if I was to ever have to get on another roller coaster, so I don't mess with the things like that. So I'm pretty sure that being that they like that kind of stuff, they'll be quite all right on the airplane. But other than that, you know, it is what it is. I'm excited about that. I can't wait to see my grandsons, my mommy. You know, we're going to go to the Museum of Natural History. We're going to take the girls to see that because they've never been. And I love the Museum of Natural History. I used to go all the time as a kid and, you know, do some other things with them. Um, Daiso, the Japanese dollar store, opened up right directly across the street from my mom's house. So, Mumsy is super excited to see that um, because she loves Daiso. And um, that's about it. You know, I'm going to have to pack me some warm clothes because a bitch probably about to freeze to death. Um, yeah, and I'm definitely going to miss, miss my little Tinky Man, my grandson here. So, you know, but it's only be for a week this time. Normally it's like two weeks, but it'll only be a week this time. And, um, of course, I'm always happy to get back home. So, but, you know, my daughters, they haven't been back home to New York since we've moved here so they are really excited about it but they don't want to live there they said they you know it's nice to visit but you know so that's why I look crazy today because I had things to do I had to go to the post office and mail out these wigs before um I left which I did have a sale yesterday um and yeah I did have a sale yesterday and I do have a few wigs left and that's about it, you guys. So we're going to get into this real talk. You guys, know, you guys know the drill. If you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about, meaning, you know, you got some tea to spill, bitch, okay? If you got some tea to spill, girl, spill it. Spill it, spill it. You can send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. You can check the link below or the description box. My email address is in there. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, okay? Like, seriously, because I like to do the real talks. This is when I am able to just be free and, and be me. Like, I be me in the wig videos, too. But, you know, I don't be trying to curse or nothing, like, in the wig videos. I might slip up once in a blue. But on the real talk, I just say what the fuck I want to say without having to bleep out any curse words. You know what I'm saying? So, and I put on my, my lashes yesterday, my new, well, these are the same lashes from Shop Miss A, but it's a new pair, you know what I'm saying? These are the Vanessa's, and I absolutely love these. These are their 3D faux mink lashes, $1.55, bitch, I love them, like, oh my God, let me show you guys, like. Can 
do y'all see these are nice like seriously these i love these ones i like the vanessa's and i like the um brianna's and the alidia's those are the three that i have and those ones are the best ones i think those ones are by far the best you know what i'm saying but so yeah i have my new lashes on i will have videos for you guys uploaded i'm not sure if it's going to be every day because i do have some that i do need to edit um while i'm away but i'm not going to like stress myself out to edit them if i don't have to um or you know what i'm saying either way but i love you guys make sure you um send me an email for real talk you could always change the names in the email if you know your name is brianna but you don't want nobody to know then a bitch will rename you vanessa okay but if you do decide to change it just let me know or if not 99.9 .9 percent of the time if you don't tell me i'm definitely going to change it because i don't want nobody's business being exposed and then y'all come back to me like girl it's your fault you use my name and all that like no bitch it's not my fault it's your fault because you didn't address the shit to the person that you were talking shit about in the first fucking place so on that note let's get into this real talk okay Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. All right, you. Hey, you can't be making all that noise with your dog toys in here because you're not gonna be in here messing up my videos. You're not. You. You're not going to. To no. So look. First of all, Pinky got a haircut two weeks ago, and now she looked like a little shabby alley dog, right? You don't even look like you got a haircut. No. Mommy's going to miss you. I know it. You're breasting. You do. Yes, you're breasting. I got to do this video, okay? You play and be nice and behave, okay? You do that? Okay. Hey, April, you can call me whatever you like. Okay, bitch. We're going to call her Vanessa because I like this Vanessa. Okay, girl, I need advice. So my boyfriend has his own for... Hey! So my boyfriend has his own four bedroom house in a nice neighborhood. He has a great job and also a good provider for his family. As well, we have a baby on the way due in September. Thing is, we don't live together because his grown ass siblings, two sisters, moved in with him and brought their grown ass boyfriends or husbands. Both of them have three kids. A piece that also lives in the house too. They work good jobs. Oh, they, they, they each have three kids apiece. Um, they also live in the house, too. They work good jobs, but pay him half of the bills when they feel like it. So, basically, his brother has his sisters living there with their boyfriends and baby daddies and their kids, and they pay him half the bill whenever they want to. They never wash their kids or clean up after them. Neither their kids are always getting into things and throwing fits when they don't get their way. One day, I came out of my boyfriend's room and walked into the living room. His sister and her boyfriend were just sitting on the couch watching TV while their kids were destroying the kitchen like it was nothing. I can never get sleep because they're always yelling and talking loud as fuck as if the other people in the house don't have to work. They stay up all night even letting their young kids stay up too. They don't even have a bedtime. They're always asking my boyfriend for something or help with something when they both have men but of their own to help them but his sister's boyfriend stays on his video games all day and doesn't give a fuck about the kids or her and never helps out around the house my boyfriend has to do everything they always want my boyfriend to watch their kids all the time so we never go on dates anymore and he pushes me to the side sometimes hell one sister just had a baby a few weeks ago instead of being with her baby her and her boyfriend ran off to work and pushed their baby off on my boyfriend when he has worked all day when they come home from work and still neglects their kids. They'll leave the newborn baby in a room by himself, the, li um, the living room by the back door to be, okay. They'll leave the newborn baby in a room by himself. It's at the living room by the back door to be exact. So it's probably like a den. But we'll take their older kids up to their bedroom shaking my head it's so sad just recently his other sister that doesn't live here son moved in because his sister put his bum ass put her bum ass men before her own child so now his her his other sister's son lives at my boyfriend's house and he was living in bad living conditions that were disgusting so my boyfriend has full guardianship of of this little boy um which is who's eight years old um and what okay yeah so 
Okay, so my boyfriend has full guardian of his nephew who is eight years old. His sister treated this little eight-year-old like shit. They make him watch their kids and clean up after them. They bully him. And honestly, I'm tired of not saying anything to them. I want to punch the bitches in the face. But I don't want my boyfriend to have to choose between me or his family. But that's what it's coming to. I just want my boyfriend to get back to get a backbone and tell them about themselves or else I can't move in with him. I don't want to be this long. I don't want this to be a long story, April. What do you think I should do? Thanks girl for your beautiful videos. I love your channel. I've been watching you for years, Vanessa. So basically Vanessa's boyfriend have his own home, nice home, four bedroom house. He got his own job. Okay. He take care of his bills. He let his two sisters move in with their boyfriend and their husband so he has two sisters that live with him one has a boyfriend one has a husband each one of those sisters have three children which means there's six kids total in your house plus four extra adults okay so that's 10 and then the sister and then his brother who owns it that's 11 then her boyfriend we're gonna call larry we're gonna call him larry then vanessa's boyfriend larry not only does he have his two sisters and their baby daddy and husband and their three kids, which totals up to six kids living there, he also invited his other sister's eight-year-old son to come and stay there without the mother because he is living in horrible living conditions and his sister is not tending to him, so he has taken guardianship over his eight-year-old nephew. So there's a total of seven kids and five adults. That's 12 people in one house. In a four bedroom. <clears throat> now, first of all, I don't give a fuck how many. 12 people is a lot of motherfuckers in the house, okay? For a four bedroom. I got a four bedroom house. And there's no 12 people here. Now, mind you, it gets, to me, crowded. All right? Because I have my room. Then Mumsy and Nay share room. Then Tati and Tinky have their own room. Then Wuzzle has his own room downstairs. There can't be nobody else moving here. Like, where are they supposed to sleep at? Okay? That's a lot of people. And to have 12 people in a house where nobody does anything, those that care for their kids, you know, don't clean up after them, throwing them off on other people to watch, that's too many motherfuckers. Listen, let me tell you something, Vanessa. I know Vanessa's about to have a baby. Vanessa and Larry are about to have a baby of their own, which is due in September, okay? So that's right around the corner. Now, first of all, Vanessa, I wouldn't move up in that motherfucker if you paid me to. All right. Now I can see it being your boyfriend, Larry, and his eight year old nephew, because of course he has guardianship over him. So he's taking care of him. And then yourself, that's enough. You got your boyfriend, you got you, you got your boyfriend's nephew, and you got your baby on the way. That right there is enough people. Because let me tell you, that's where all the bedrooms are occupied. Boyfriend, Larry, and Vanessa are in one room. Newborn baby in another room, the eight year old nephew in his own room. So now we got one extra bedroom, which is not for fucking overnight guests that don't know how to fucking leave. That's just a fucking room, okay, that is just going to be for extra shit. Fuck it. Extra shit. Playroom, entertainment room, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Not for nobody to move the fuck in and be like, oh, you got an extra room. No. Let me tell you something. I already can see that from just your boyfriend's point of view of being tired and coming home from work and watching somebody else's kids, that he's tired. I don't give a fuck if we are related. You're not about to walk all over me. And that's exactly what they're doing. And like you said, he need to get a backbone. Honey, you need to have a real serious heart-to-heart -heart with Larry's ass because he just going to allow them to take over his home. And before you know it, the depreciation value of his house is going to go down the drain because you got all these people living there who could care less about even tending to their own children and taking care of them, let alone worry about how destructive these seven kids can be in one home. Let me tell y'all, I have a grandson who lives here with me. He's four. He could be a little bit destructive, but I don't allow him to tear my shit up. But you got seven kids. You cannot keep an eye on all of them. Okay, that's a lot of motherfuckers in one house. 12 people. And then granted, you come and spend the night. Girl, let me tell you, I wouldn't even go over there to spend the fucking night. We either going to have to go to a hotel or somewhere else. But we are not about to spend the night there. And I am not about to hear the bickering, the foolishness, the laziness. You know what I'm saying? You got grown ass adults. Grown ass adults. And y'all can't pick up a dish, wash y'all little rug rats. That's what the fuck they are, rug rats. If you allowing them to run through the house, run amok up in your shit. 
then, you know what I'm saying, they rug rats. And then, you know, the brother Larry probably feeling like, well, this is my sister's. I don't want to come off as being mean. You know, family stick together. Yeah, that's true. Family does stick together. But you know what? Sometimes family could be the one that do you the worst and do you the dirtiest. And I'll say this to you. I've told you guys this plenty of times. Just because y'all related by blood does not mean that that is going to be the best situation for you. That don't mean that they're going to be true blood to you, okay? Just because you're related by blood does not mean that y'all are real family. Meaning, they not some people that are related to you don't take family being like family. They don't take that shit really serious. Some people take that as a grain of salt. Some people treat their homies on the street more better than they treat their own family. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say don't think because that's your family that y'all going to stick together. Family be the ones that always get you because they feel like because they family that, you know, it's acceptable. You'll get over it. you forgive me. We'll go back to terms. You know what I'm saying? We family. We blood. Listen, let me tell y'all. I have family that I could care two fucks about, and I don't mean to sound mean, and I don't mean to sound rude, but I have had family. Take my cousin, for instance, the one that was with me in New York City, who was rude as fuck to people and embarrassing. She ain't no real family. Like, that bitch will talk about me like a dog, okay? And yeah, granted, I'm talking about her. But I tell her to her face what the fuck I got to say. And yeah, if you ask me what I'm talking about, you bitch, you know I am. But her, not at all. And not only that, I have been, I have allowed this, this woman, my cousin, to stay with me in my home prior. Not here. And, you know, she has stolen things from me. And when I say she has stolen things, yes, I know she's stolen them. Because she brought those same stolen items back to New York City when I was living upstate New York. And told her mother that some boy... Bought her this leather jacket with this matching skirt. When in reality, my mom was like, that's my daughter's shit. So she was stealing clothes from me while I was at work, you know, thinking that I wasn't going to notice them because I was pregnant at the time with Mumsy. So, yeah, granted, I wasn't going to notice them because I couldn't put them on, but it doesn't give you the right to steal from me. She would steal my ID, ended up missing, like an old ID that was expired that was in my drawer, ended up missing, like gone, like got feet and walked off, you know. And what happened... Once I didn't even realize the ID was missing, didn't even know how long it was missing for until I had a knock on my door by the fucking New York State Police telling me that they got um, my ID that was used at a Price Chopper grocery store cashing fake checks. I'm like, I don't even have any checks to cash at Price Chopper, but they have my ID being used, but the person on camera who's using the ID is definitely not me, as the officer said. He said, he's she's your skin complexion, but she does not have all these tattoos like you have. She doesn't even look like you, not the same size, anything. So he's like, do you know how she got your ID? And I'm like, that ID is expired, and I don't even know how she would have gotten it when it was in a drawer in my room along with my other IDs, such as my food stamp ID that, you know, because I did get food stamps back then. So those were all expired IDs. Those were all no good IDs anymore. I didn't need them. Um, that was in there. My um, um, another old, old ID, it was pretty old, was in there. And that one was missing. The cops couldn't give it to me because they didn't have it, of course, but... It was scanned and that picture popped up as me, but the girl on the video camera was not me. So it's like, how the hell did she get my photo ID when it was in my drawer in this little box, rubber band up? Only could be one solution to that. My cousin, my family stole because she stole my clothes. So I wouldn't put it past you that you didn't take my ID. She's up to schemes and scams like that. So when I tell you guys that family can get you, they'll get you. We've had many a beast. My cousin is the type of person who tells story time. Now, y'all know what story time is on YouTube. To me, story time is a bunch of lies and bullshit. Because every fucking time I listen to a story time, I'll be like, damn, girl, that happened to you? At first, I really did think that these stories that these people were telling on YouTube were actually honest. But then when you start listening to them and then you start seeing other people's videos, it's like, you had all this shit going on to you and you still alive? Damn, bitch. So she's one of those pathological liars, okay? Because that's what the fuck they need to be called. Pathological liar stories. Fuck story time. This shit is a pathological liar. Mm -hmm. So when we say family, family will dig a new hole in your ass, okay? So your boyfriend Larry, 
He really needs to get a backbone. Me personally, I wouldn't move there. Why would I want to move somewhere where just by visiting, it gives me a fucking headache? And let alone have to live around these people constantly? Girl, please. That's just the worst. Not only that, but on top of that is you're not only going to be cleaning up after yourself and your eight-year-old adopted nephew and your boyfriend, but you're going to be cleaning up uh, after his siblings, his two sisters, and their baby daddies, and their six kids all together. And there'll be no way in God's green earth am I going to be cleaning up after all those motherfuckers, let alone be aggravated. Could you imagine living in a house with 12 motherfuckers, okay? 12 motherfuckers, and then you have your baby, now you are 13, and 14. So then that's 14 motherfuckers in one four-bedroom house. Like, where the fuck are we at? Like, that's a lot of people in one house. Okay? Where? There's only four bedrooms. So if each one of his two sisters have three kids apiece, that's boyfriend and girlfriend. Baby sleeping in one room. Where? That's a lot of kids. I'm sorry, but that's just way too many fucking people in my house. I don't even like people coming to my house, let alone all those people. Listen, honey, I understand that's your boyfriend and that is his home, but there has to be a way where you can sit down and discuss things with him. You need to let him know that, you know, you are concerned about his well-being. You are concerned about the living environment and the living situation. You need to tell him that his home is being um, overtaken by unwelcome, unwanted guest that don't know how to leave and you also need to let him know like listen we are about to have a family and we need the space and we need the time together that's too much chaos going in one household for anybody to fucking think straight like seriously i promise you and i guarantee you there's probably never a quiet fucking time up in that bitch she's telling me that these little kids that's running around don't even have a bedtime they running around all hours of the night, two in the morning and shit. First of all, kids need a bedtime because if you allow them to stay up all night with you, do you know those motherfuckers will drive you crazy and insane? That's child neglect. They need to rest. They need to be settled down, bathed, settled down, and put to bed. Now, if you're telling me that they running around until like two in the morning, that means that they're not even washing these kids. They're not even bathing them. Because I, I would think, like, once you bathe your kid, it's time to go lay down. But you allowing them to sneak, keep running around, running amok. Honey, let me tell y'all something. I love me some kids, but I'm not about to be irritated and aggravated by nobody else's kids. And that's the one thing I'll tell y'all. I love me some kids like my own motherfuckers. But when you take on somebody else's kids, you can't necessarily treat them the way you treat your own. But me, fuck that. If my little grandson is around me, I'm fucking y'all ass up. I don't give a fuck who kids you are. I'm fucking you up. And if you don't like it, you can go tell your mama. And she gonna get fucked up too. I'm not about to let nobody irritate me. Especially under the age of like 18. You crazy. I'll kill a little motherfucker. Not literally, but you know what I'm saying? Listen, the way my fucking tolerance is set up, a bitch don't have time for it, okay? I'm not about to be irritated by nobody's kids, especially with all them people, plus grown-ups, and these are not even grown-ups. Your brother got a bunch of fucking teenagers living in his household because if they were grown-ups and act like grown-ups, then they would be tending to their kids. Now, they just got a newborn baby. First of all, if his sister, let me say this much. So he got his one sister that just had a baby, her third baby. Don't you think, like, if you just had a baby, you should have your own shit, especially if you got two other kids? You should have your own shit. You can't have... Hold on, guys. I can't remember what I was saying because I was talking, my daughter was telling me, because people out here can't drive for shit. Um, and she's got my, um, my Malibu, my little car, because something is wrong with her car. Um, so I let her drive mine. But anyway, so, um... What I was saying, you know, his sister got, yeah, like I was saying, now I remember what I was saying. So his sister just had another baby, his her third baby. So you got a newborn that you're not even tending to. They're not even bringing the newborn baby upstairs to their fake bedroom. And I say their fake bedroom because that's not their home, okay? That's not their home. So you're leaving the newborn downstairs for whoever is around to watch after it, okay? And on top of that, they got the little eight-year-old nephew watching the kids and bullying him and being mean like the little boy didn't come from enough bullshit already but on top of that you got these people like i'm sorry but if you have two kids already i think if you have kids you should be in your own shit like that's just my opinion like if you have 
if you have kids, you need to be in your own shit. And I even tell my daughter this, like, you have your own kid. That means that's your own family. And you need to be in your own shit. Maybe I'm wrong for that, but that's how I feel, okay? Because when I have my kid, I have my own shit. Now, when you have, maybe sometimes circumstances do arise, you know what I'm saying? Like, financially or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And you are forced to live at home with your parent and your one child. Don't mean that you live at home with your one child, with your parent, that you go out and have two kids. I'll be damned if I have my my two... Listen, let me tell you this. I love my grandson being here because this is where he... This is his home. This is what he knows. But there will be a time when you have to move out because you have your own family. And she's been looking and she has an apartment, an application and apartment already my daughter has apartment she has an application in with an apartment already so she's just waiting to hear from them but if my daughter was to get pregnant with a second baby you're not gonna live up in my motherfucking house with two babies that's not what's about to happen because i'm not about to put up with two babies in my household not at all granted i have my own kids but those times have gone come and gone and i don't want nobody else's family living up in my shit except for me and my little kids on my own shit you know what i'm saying and granted that is my family but when you have your own kids you need to be in your own shit bottom line and now here you are living with your brother and you have three kids you just brought another one in here like you got you now here's the thing he got his two sisters they both work and their baby husbands baby daddies and husbands work why the fuck are you living with your brother if you both have jobs, husband and wife have jobs, then husband and wife need to have their own shit. Especially when husband and wife can fuck and have kids, then husband and wife need to move into their own shit. But let's also mention the fact that Larry's sisters and and and, and brother-in-laws don't even pay him. They pay him when they want to, and they pay him what they want to. Girl, please. I'm going to say this real quick. You ain't about to live up in my shit and be using my motherfucking water, electricity, cable, internet, gas, groceries, toiletries, and none of that shit. And you feel like you can pay me when you want to? You crazy. Your shit and you will be out on the front lawn, okay? That's where the fuck it would be. Now, what you need to tell Larry, Vanessa, is he needs to have a backbone. And he needs to write up a contract and have them sign it and let them know as of today's date, whatever date he makes his mind up to write this shit and hand it over to them, that you will be giving a 30-day notice to vacate the premises. They taking advantage of this man to the utmost because they feel like he their brother, he got room in his house, and he can welcome them. No, sweetheart. Just because people have extra rooms in their bedrooms don't mean that they extra rooms, okay? I don't just buy a house and be like, or rent a house, whatever you want to call it, and be like, well, this is an extra room. No, nah, I don't say that because there's no such shit as extra. That's just like when people be like, you got any spare change? You got any extra change? When the fuck does anybody ever have extra money or spare money? I've never heard of such a thing. So there's no such thing as a spare room or an extra room. And needless to say, if you feel that there is a such thing, please don't tell nobody that you got a spare room. Because that motherfucker will take that as you are welcoming them and inviting them to come stay with you for as long as they feel like it. Do not ever tell nobody you got an extra or spare room. Because they will say, oh, that's, that's, they, hmm. They invited me to come live with them. Nah, bitch. We really not. We No, nah, I'm just telling you about the motherfucker. That shit ain't going to be extra and spare for too long. Because I surely am going to fill that shit up with some motherfucking shit of my own. And that shit will be occupied. Okay? That's an occupied room. And unfortunately, every last fucking bedroom in your boyfriend's house is being occupied with people that need to have their own fucking shit. See, that's why I never allow anybody to come stay with me. But you can come if you listen. If you got if you my friend and you want to come visit me in Arizona, you can come and visit me. But your stay here is not gonna be too motherfucking long. Because for one, I'm setting my ways and I really don't like to have to cater to people too much. Like, don't get it fucked up. Like I love to have company sometimes. Okay. But then I'm the type of person. When the motherfucker go home? 
That's that's how I am. You ever have somebody come over your house just to visit for the day or for a few hours, and then they be there for like ten minutes, and then you be like, well, damn, when this motherfucker going? Cause I'm just ready for them to go. Or how about this? You ever have somebody ring your doorbell and knock on your motherfucking door uninvited? And being that you uninvited, bitch, I'm not gonna open the door all the way and allow you to come up in my shit and sit on my furniture because I didn't invite your ass over here. You just popped up willy nilly on a motherfucker like it was okay. So what the fuck do you do? This is what the fuck I do. I stand in the door and talk to them because the bitch I didn't invite your. I don't give a fuck if you've been in here before and sat on my couch and we was kicking it. Bitch, I didn't invite your ass today. Don't pop up in my motherfucking house. And on top of that, please, if you come to visit me for like a week or two, make sure that I know that you got a round trip ticket because you're not going to get here and tell me you're going to buy another one. Because nah, bitch, I'm not buying you another one, but um, you definitely not going to fucking stay here until you get ready to buy another one. Now, I'm going to need you to have your plans already fucking in full throttle before you get to April's house because if not, then you will not be staying at this motherfucker. Okay, you invite people into your homes to stay and you try to help them the fuck out. And it seems like they don't never know when to leave. And what makes it so bad is when you invite people in, they don't know how to treat your home. If that were me, I would be tiptoeing, walking on eggshells in anybody's house. Because first of all, I don't like to be in other people's homes. Second of all, I don't want them to feel like I'm overstaying my visit. Third of all, I don't want nobody talking shit about me behind my back. Like, yeah, that bitch came and stayed here. She didn't wash the tub out. She didn't wash the dishes. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't need nobody to talk about me. So. I just go stay in a hotel. I'm, I, cause you know why? I could walk around in my underwear. I could sleep how I want to. I ain't even got to make up the bed. I don't feel like I have to entertain you or have to say good morning to you, cause I'm that type of bitch where sometimes I don't feel like being bothered. And if I'm in your shit, then I'm gonna have to be bothered. So I don't want to come off as being snooty, bougie, or just having attitudey. Okay? I just want to be on my own time and my own shit. So I will stay in a motherfucking hotel. Okay? You cannot invite family to stay in your home and stay with you because the motherfuckers never know when to fucking leave. And now that you and Larry, Vanessa, are about to have a little baby due in September, it's this is about to be the month of April, damn near. April, May, June, July, August, September. You got six months, damn near. And I guarantee you, it's going to take you a minute to clean up the fucking mess and bullshit that these motherfuckers have left behind. Because for one, you telling me that these motherfuckers don't even tend to their kids. For two, they be sitting there and the kids are just running amok. For three, they never let them go to bed at a decent time. They running the fuck around like a bunch of wild coyotes. Okay? So I guarantee you that there is going to be some destruction in that house that has been left the fuck behind by his two sisters they baby daddy and husband and them six motherfucking rug rats okay so now is the time to put the shit in nip and nip in the bud and let your boyfriend know we are about to have a family and we are going to need to get things together you need to set set your foot down and let them know like listen this is how much time you guys have here because i need my home back and you know something was so sad about it is this that them girls, his sisters, are probably going to be fucking butthurt and pissed off and mad and angry and talk crazy shit about Larry. But you know what, bitch? You can talk all you want, but you won't be here talking to shit. I don't give a fuck where you go, but you got to get the fuck up out of here. Hello? So, yes, Vanessa, it's time that you have a heart-to-heart -heart with Larry's ass and let him know the things that you have been seeing and how you are worried and concerned about him. You know, sometimes we got to beef it up a little bit like, I'm worried and concerned about you, hon. I see that you're stressed. You know what I'm saying? Sound, sound, sound saddened and really concerned, even though you are concerned, but overly concerned about his well-being and the environment that he's in. So that way, maybe he will do something about it. But if you come to him and bitch to him on some rah-rah shit, he's probably going to be defensive about it because let's keep it in mind, that is his sisters. And even though he's getting irritated and he probably want them to leave he's still not going to want you to come to him on some aggressive shit and talk the shit about his family so you need to approach him in a mean in a demeanor where you know you're humbling yourself you seem very over concerned because you need this shit to be done nipped in the butt and you also need to let him know that listen i can't live in that environment um with the baby and i want to live with you because he wants you to live with him but this is not the environment the structure that i was planning on seeking out basically it's time for the motherfuckers to move y'all got three kids y'all got three whole motherfucking kids each in this house listen i love my family and all but if my sister had three kids bitch you're not moving up in here with them even my my son he got two kids and his wife like i love him to death too but you're not moving up in here with, my, with them i love my grandkids but i'm sorry i'm not about to take on nobody else's family 
because for one, I'm set in my ways and I don't like nobody touching my shit. I'm very particular about my shit. So with that being said, it's time to put a nip in the bud, sweetheart, and get to the point of the matter and let him know this is how it is and what I'm seeing and I'm feeling really concerned for you. Because let me say this much. If you allow me to live with you and I didn't have to pay for a motherfucking thing, a bill or nothing, bitch, I'm going to stay there all day, okay, until I get good and ready to go. And that's what the fuck they doing. As long as he don't say shit, they're going to allow the shit. And sisters, siblings, bitches, females are so catty. Women are catty, and you guys know that y'all are catty. You, c women are catty, and I don't care if that's his sisters. Them bitches is catty. Catty for one, for doing the shit that they're doing, allowing their kids to just run amok. That's for one. And for two, just being filthy and nasty. And for three, staying there for this long. Like, come on, get your shit and get the fuck out. Point blank. So, you guys, that was my only real talk. Like, I didn't even have no more. I, I swear I did not have any more real talk. And I'm not sure why, but I'm not too happy about it. So, you know, y'all bitches got problems and issues. Y'all need to address the shit already. And, um, you know, hit a bitch up. Like, let me know, like, hey, I got some issues. And I'm going to need you to do a real talk about this. Cool, she looks so pretty. Because if you don't, I'm going to be really, really upset. So, you know, hook a bitch up with some real talks. Okay. Let me know what y'all thinking and shit. Oh, look at me on RPG Hair's website. And, oh, her haircut looks pretty. Oh, my bad. I will see you guys in a soon-to-come video. I got to pack up my shit. I, I didn't even take anything out for New York. I know. I suck. I love you. And I will see you guys soon.